Thank you. Uh, I, I invite Eviatar uh, Matania, Dr. Eviatar Matania, who is head of our uh, cyber uh, bureau. Uh, please, Eviatar. You can read about the speakers in your leaflet that you have. You have a, a conference, so I will not uh, lose time by introducing the people. You can read about them. Please, Eviatar. Thank you. And uh, good morning and welcome you all to Israel on this uh, very important conference. As I find it, um, the changing era makes it very important for all of us to bring new knowledge, new strategies, new ideas to the table from various and uh, different people, countries, and the importance of such a conference, which brings together people from all around the world and from different sectors, is very important in order to produce this new knowledge when coming to try and mitigate with the cyber era, the cyber threat, and building new strategies and policies. In uh, that context, I would like to mention that one of the objectives by establishing the National Cyber Bureau, which I had for more than two years, was to, in Israel, to develop and produce the knowledge and understanding in cyber by producing it inside the Bureau, but also by supporting and um, building these ideas and knowledge through these conferences and through also research centers. We have just, uh, in the last week, have just completed a process of uh, initiating two, the first two cyber research centers in Israel, in our universities. The first one is in Tel Aviv University. Uh, which is going uh, to be headed by Professor Ben Israel and is going to not just produce new knowledge from the technology point of view, but also to be an interdisciplinary center uh, working also on policies, ethics, education in the cyber domain. And the second one in Ben Gurion University, which will focus in uh, more in uh, I would say, uh, applications of uh, cyber technologies. <clears throat> In this morning, I would like to share with you, I, would, I don't like to replace the coming very interesting uh, speakers. I would like to, sh to only share three remarks about how nations and countries should approach the cyber domain and what we are trying to do in Israel in this uh, approach. My first remark goes to strategies and policies. One very interesting point is that when you try to, to think or to see what countries around the world do with strategies, you find a lot of, a lot of differences in developing the policies, the strategies, but these differences are not just a result of different threats, but also the result of whom was asked to lead the nation, nation strategy. Several countries ask their Department of Justice to lead the ideas of how to approach the cyber domain. Others search the solutions in the Ministry of Defense. Other countries thought that may the security services or others should lead the approach, and so on. And the strategies that are built around the world, and I saw it in a lot, in many countries, are a result not, not only of what the threats that the country see or how 
the culture or the nature of the country is different from each other, but whom was asked to lead this approach? So you see different strategies in different countries which comes from the MOD or the Ministry of Justice or Security Services or maybe other ministries or agencies that try to lead it. In Israel, by the way, it was understood that approaching this domain should come from the national level, and that's why our bureau was established straight under the uh, prime minister and the prime minister office, at least trying to see the whole picture. I'm not sure, and I don't know if we have better strategies than others, but at least we understand that we should build a comprehensive strategy by trying to see the whole picture from security sector, civilian market, industry, academy, justice, and everything. A second point regarding strategies is the question of how to produce a strategy in a rapid changing technological era. You cannot change strategy daily. You can even, I, I, I also recommend not to change it every year or every two years. And I have already seen several countries which have new strategies every two years regarding the cyber domain. It's a problem because governments and countries cannot change their policies and strategies every two or three years. And the test is if your strategy that you uh, tried to produce five years ago is still exists and is, still, is it still relevant and will it be relevant in five years ahead. So it's a real challenge to try and build a strategy or policy that is robust enough in order to stay with us through the coming years, but should also be flexible enough to include all the changing technologies because just look 20 years ago when this cell phone was developed 20 to 30 years ago, 20 years ago only 12 million cell phones were uh, sold around the world. Last year, 7 billion. And 10 years ago, no one thought about this cell phone as a smartphone. Now it includes all our life, our social networks, our ideas, our thoughts, everything. I use it, but think about our children. This is their life. So one couldn't think about it 10 years ago. And it changed a lot of things. But it shouldn't change the strategies. Strate strategies should be above the changing technologies. Now, if you look in, around the world, you see that several of the strategies, or what called strategies, are not strategies at all. They are just work plans, or um, I would say uh, um, operation thoughts about how to approach the problems. So when coming to really build a nation strategy to approach the cyber domain, the cyber uh, defense, the threats, but also the digital era as well, the opportunities, everything, a country should try to adopt thoughts and studies and knowledge of how to build these strategies and policies above the changing technologies, but also to produce them flexible enough in order to maintain and include the changing, the very rapid changing technologies and era that we live in. 
My second remark go to, goes to human resources. One cannot exaggerate with uh, the importance of human resources everywhere and uh, especially when talking about the cyber domain, we need to focus on the human resource and try to see if current education in our countries, Israel is uh, an example, if current education is really producing and developing the right people in order to lead, promote, and be there not just five years ago or 10 years ago, but also 10 years ahead. Now, I can divide this challenge into three main areas. The first area is a technological people. With no leading technological people, there will be no innovation. There will be no technological leading of the domain we will not be able to really be there, dominate this domain, and also to adopt the opportunities as well as to mitigate with the threats. So we need much better scientific and technological education <clears throat> than we have all around the world. We need to produce the elite technological people and this is a real and first challenge of every country in Israel. Is the not, it's also a challenge of Israel because what was enough 10 or 20 years ago is not enough. Now we need more than them. The second challenge is those who don't understand anything in technology. How can one lead a nation strategy, not a cyber strategy, a nation strategy, or ministries in a new and coming era when doesn't understand anything in technology? What we need is that all of those <clears throat> who come from other studies who don't understand technology will know how to talk technology. They will know the language. They should understand something in technology because otherwise our country as well as our countries will not be able to really adopt the new changes, to really understand what is going to happen and will not be able to mitigate with the pace of technology. We need that officials in all our ministries and agencies in municipalities, in Ministry of Economy, in, min in not just in Ministry of Science, in our Ministry of Defense, in our Ministry of Justice, everywhere. We need them to understand technology. They don't have to be technologists. They don't have to study engineering or science, but they should talk the language. And this is a real challenge. Only by succeeding in this challenge, we will be able to change the country. It will not be changed and will not be, will not be able to mitigate with the problem if just <coughs> educating technologists. But in between, we need the people that come from technology and know how to do other things, because most of engineers and scientific people are not there. And we need those who don't come from technology to be part of the group that we lead the nation. Those in between are the most important people. How to educate them? How to take technologists and educate them to understand the soft things, the soft studies? How to take those who come from the soft studies and teach them technology in order to have the groups of leaders of a nation in trying to approach the new era, the cyber era. These are, these are challenges when coming to human resources, and I believe that we share them all. My third, my third and last remark, because I, I am left with only three minutes, 
is regarding the role of private companies, the role of global corporations in the cyber domain. Who is moving faster? Just take 100 years ago, governments dominated the world. But when you look at 2014, who is moving faster? Governments or private companies? Just think about the challenge for me in the prime minister office to try and initiate new things to try and produce something, to build knowledge, to recruit people. Those who come from governments are just laughing now. Just, and these are governments all around the world. We move slowly. Who is moving faster? Who can really adopt the changes? Private companies, private sectors. Think about who dominates the domain, this is not like the air domain or the sea domain. Those who dominate the domain are global corporations. The communication, the knowledge, the understanding, everything comes from a private market, from global corporations, not from governments. Not just from governments, and mainly not from governments. But governments have responsibility. And governments should understand that they have a role in approaching the cyber domain. So this is a real challenge. How to combine the private market with the government in order to produce, him some, to produce him something new. This is not like <clears throat> answering, for example, the terror threat this is not like, for example, just building vehicles for the private market to build incubators and investment. This is something new. A real combination of government and private market together <clears throat> with the university, everyone to build a new country, and we try in Israel to do it. So, I will just end my uh, opening remarks with again thanking the INSS for this conference, I think they're bringing together so much different and various people from different places is a very important thing in order to produce the real knowledge of the cyber domain. I believe that we should understand that we have a lot of challenges ahead, so there will be enough conferences also in the future. And I just would like you to think about what I just remarked. <clears throat> Strategies, human resources, and the combination, cooperation, collaboration between privates and governments as very important challenges and guiding ideas in how to approach the cyber domain. Thank you, and have a very good day.